Joey, how are you? I'm doing good. Oh, how are you, David? We, good. We are we are live, and uh, let's just let's just get started. We've got a. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, so today was a really exciting day. Today was the first release of maps by the Legislative Apportionment Commission. So, so if if you're watching this, you already know what's going on. You already are attuned to it, or, or, or you wouldn't be here at all. And that is the uh, uh, the redrawing of the state's forty legislative districts. Uh, the tiebreaker, Judge Philip Karchman asked that all of the, the two maps from the Democrats and the Republicans be released today to the public. So there's an opportunity for public comment. Uh, I mean, Mike, I think one of the things and I, we should start with this, it seems to me Judge Karchman is trying to avoid some of the, uh, some of the steps that Judge Justice Wallace took on congressional redistricting to let the public see what's happening uh, before it's too late, before a vote's already cast. I would agree with that. And you know how if you've got a long program and you go after somebody who did really well, you're nervous about it. He he had a good example of, of what not to follow, to be quite honest and frank about it. And uh, the process has been different. And uh, this is absolutely an attempt to be transparent. We've talked before about the hokey part of today, which was um, uh, not to label the maps Republican and Democrat. Uh, everybody was going to figure that out within seconds and did. Uh, but, you know, I can understand where he was coming from uh, to not want to label them uh, as partisan in case one of them does get picked, which we don't expect to have happen. We expect this to to play out from here. And so you know, is... for, from our perspective. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. For, from our perspective as analysts looking at the overall map, it matters a lot what the what the partisanship is. Um, I can understand the impulse, maybe a little bit more not to label them from the perspective of I'd like to figure out what district I might be in um, from the perspective of just sort of a person in New Jersey who happens to be looking at these maps, um, the, the, the partisan distinctions of who proposed the map would be less important than, oh, my hometown of Clifton is in this district versus that district. So we're going to have, there is a hearing on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, I, I assume I know what's going to happen. The people who don't like the map are going to show up and say, here's why we don't like the map, which, which is important because they need this feedback. Uh, I would imagine that both sides will try and recruit some voices on that uh, in that hearing to tell Judge Karchman why they like it. Does, it. does that make sense? It does. I mean, you know, he has laid out several different criteria. Uh, one of the criteria that he laid out is continuity of representation. Democrats are going to hang their hat on that one. Their map preserves a lot of lines and a lot of uh, legislators' current seats. Uh, not all of them, you know, they put some in, into districts with others that they thought they could beat. Um, but that was one that they're clearly want, gonna want him, him to drill, drill down on. Republicans, on the other hand, are going to want him to drill down on the measure of competitiveness, right? And they're the ones who have to do that because they don't have the advantage of the map that's on their side right now. They don't have the majority. They're looking to shake things up. They want to expand the map. And so those are, the, I think, the two imperatives we're going to see playing out. So the Republicans have lost the last two maps, uh, you know, and I, I cannot resist uh, uh, saying that, you know, under the Wallace doctrine, uh, given the fact that, that Republicans have lost the last two, they should win, win this. But, but the reality is that's what we're seeing here is, is Democrats are sitting on 24 state Senate seats and they don't really want to change it that much because it's working for them. Republicans, uh, it looked to me, are very aggressive in what they're proposing. Mm -hmm. uh, and that also makes a lot of sense because uh, they, they need to pick up seats and, and they need to pick up, they need to have everything click everywhere. So, so how about if we do this? Because I think that's, I think it's, it's really, if, if, if people are watching, that's, that's really what they're here for is to, to see the map. So how about, how about if I start with the Democratic map and let's work from the south going north uh, uh, and, and let's, let's, talk about, uh, let's talk about where 
where that is and what they did here. And I'll, I'll, I'll blow it up a, a little bit. So, so one of the things that's very clear is, is, uh, is Republicans have done well in South Jersey mm -hmm. over the last two cycles, the 2019 special in District 1, Cape May and Cumberland, and then holding District 2, flipping two assembly seats, uh, this, this monumental upset of Ed Durr and Beth Sawyer and, right. and Beth and uh, uh, McCarthy Patrick in the third district. And uh, uh, I don't even want to say picked up the eighth district Senate seat. They simply won the same seat they had won mm -hmm. uh, four years earlier and they held these assembly seats. So, so what it looks like, you know, let me start. Joey, you, you wrote today about district two. Let's let's start there about what the Democrats are doing in District 2. So the Democrats, first of all, the Democrats in District 2, th what they're doing is the same as what Republicans are doing in District 2. It's a pretty, it's one of the most non-controversial parts of the map. Um, basically what happened, and this was partially the product of a lot of feedback that the commissioners got when they hold a uh, commission meeting in Atlantic City. Um, people really, people in Galloway uh, really wanted Galloway to return to the second district instead of being in the ninth district where it's been for the last 10 years. And both parties agreed to that, basically. Uh, both of their maps do that. Um, the only difference between the two maps is that Egg Harbor City and Port Republic are in the ninth district uh, here on this Democratic map, and they're in the second district on the Republican map. They're both small enough that you actually don't need to trade them out for anything. Um, this, this second district on the Democratic map is just kind of small, and the one on the Republican map is kind of big. Um, and yes, yeah, so this, is, this is kind of a least change decision. Um, Atlantic County doesn't get blown up. The district voted for you know, the people that have voted for by about the same margin as the old district did. Um, so we're kind of starting off in, in the least spicy part of the map. Uh, the second district is going to be just as competitive as it was before, most likely. And it, it seems that if both if both parties are pretty close to being the same map in District 2, it's going to be hard for one of them to go back. And, and Mike, you think I mean, they can't really drastically alter it right now. This is the right. ship seems to have sailed on District 2. More or you less. Know, you're, I think you're right. And it's actually a little bit of the flip of what we just talked about in that the Republicans are winning there right now. And they think that they continue to win um, with this as they proposed it. I think that the Democrats probably are not making a great play to improve the district because they just don't see a big chance there. They just, so, I, I feel like we're going to see a lot of that in South Jersey tonight with the Repu Democrats that were left on the commission after Sweeney was gone. Um, they are not making a big play in South Jersey, I think. There's a, but it's also with the second district, it's unclear what Democrats could do to make it a better district for them. Um, just geographically, where was it? Where would it go? Uh, there, there's not really any other Democratic vote center anywhere near unless you're like stretching to Vineland or something crazy like that. So and th this district has been hugely competitive since 1973. I mean, we're going to go to 50 years of a swing district. So this district, I think we could both, we're all going to agree. Uh, it, it, it sort of favors the Republicans. It favors uh, going into, without knowing what the political environment's going to be like in 2023. Uh, you know, I think it's good news for the incumbents, but maybe, maybe not forever. Uh, well, that's a good point, David, and yeah. and I know you want to move off of it, but 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 that's a good point. This is a district that, given the right dynamics, either side could win for sure. Yeah, and will continue to be the case on this map for sure. So another eight years, and we'll we'll all be watching. Uh, we'll all be watching Atlantic County, and by the way, that mirrors to local government too. There, so yep. so yep. that makes sense. Uh, district one on the Democratic map, and, and let's let's talk about the elephant in the room as, as we, we work our way north. And that is, uh, you know, we'll get to the Republican map. The Republicans didn't seem to, they're, they're looking to, to make sure that Mike Testa and Vince Palestina and Ed Durr and Jane Stanfield return. Uh, we're going to get to what the Democrats did. They made a fairly aggressive move on Gene Stanfield, but it doesn't, look like they're really fighting to get one, two, and three back, all, all seats that they've held in recent years. 
Yeah, with one, they're definitely not making much of a play. I'm not sure if they really could make much of a play at this point with, with you know, the way their coalition is shaped right now. With District 3, unlike the Republicans, they kept Steve Sweeney's hometown of West Deptford in the district. So if he wants to, and Paulsboro as well, which is where John, a former Assemblyman John Verzichelli is from. So if they're leaving the option open, if, if any of these, you know, former Democratic power players want to make another play for the third district, they're welcome to. It's about the same partisanship. Um, but yeah, they're certainly not trying to, to do, deal a knockout punch to Ed Durd. It's a little bit of an admission that, yeah, this will, this will probably stay Republican for at least a little while. And yeah, there, district, go ahead, Mike, did you want to say something? No, I, you, you want to hold the punch about the, uh, about the Republican map. The Republican map in three is, is sort of an, an Ed Durr uh, protection map, right? <laughs> it's it's mm -hmm. incumbency yeah. protection for Ed Durr. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, it's, this has never happened before where legislators, I mean, these, uh, it is, it, you have new legislators that have not even been in office a month, and yeah. we're talking about incumbency protection maps and arguments of continuity of service, you know, for, for people that have just been, been there for a couple of weeks, but, but, you know, this is, this is about leadership elections in the future. And this is about, about Republicans keeping their balance. Uh, I mean, three is, is just going to be competitive. I mean, under a Democratic map, depending on who the candidates are, depending on, uh, on, on what the political climate is. And of course, you know, there is, there is that capacity to spend a, uh, you know, a couple thousand dollars on the Democratic side. Uh, <laughs> you know, as, as our friend Matt Friedman would say, many, many Mastros. Could be could be spent in in the third district, depending on on who they want to run. Uh, uh, I don't I don't know that they wrote it for Steve Sweeney, but they're certainly not precluding John Bersicelli from coming right. back and running for that seat. And he he won it ten times. You know, one of the things that jumps out at me about these districts and this district, as we're looking at it, is is just how much they had to grow. Um, to account for the loss in population in South Jersey right. and more rural parts of South Jersey. And uh, you and I talked before these maps came out a couple of days ago, David, about how um, it would be possible to make a play on removing a district from South Jersey if that's what they wanted to do. And neither side did propose to do that, of course. But, um, you know, theoretically, you could have moved one potentially to another part of the state. Um, you know, they went the other direction. They just grew the districts. They grew them larger uh, geographically. So when you get when you get to four, I mean, four has four has been Democratic for 18 years yep. uh, and and really haven't had close races. Uh, I mean, I I remember election night. I'm looking I'm looking at results and I'm like, oh, my, I can't believe Sweeney's losing. And then I I scroll down from three to four and I went, wow, Madden's losing, too, until I remember, right. well, he's got. He's got Camden, and once Camden was in there, that was that was pretty good. That that district on the Democratic map adds some Republican areas. You know, I mean, specifically Waterford that used to be in eight uh, mm -hmm. on the Democratic play, because we'll we'll talk about it more when we get to the Republicans map. But but is is District Four, Micah? In is are the Democrats drawing a district in a District Four that they could lose? Yeah, there, there. This, this is Sweeney, uh, Philadelphia suburbs, and and um, there's no question in my mind that in the right environment, Republicans can make a suburban play for this district. Um, and uh, and and I would be looking there if I were a Republican. It doesn't mean that the incumbents won't run well, but they are no longer going to be taken for granted that it's a safe district. Um, it has, it has. Um, um, yeah, I mean, Waterford behaves a lot like what we would say Hamilton behaves or, you know, um, you know, really pretty Republican parts of South Jersey. It's 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 pretty hardcore um, through that part. And uh, so, um, you know, Shemong in that area. So um, I think uh, Democrats are going to have to figure out a good strategy there and uh, um, run hard. Yeah. All right. And we're all in agreement. District five, district six, district nine. Uh, five and six, safe Democrat, nine, uh, safe Republican on a Democratic map, right? Yep. And, and so- and One so interesting that, thing that I'd add yeah. is that six now incorporates uh, Evesham, which means uh -huh. that uh, Don Adiago no longer um, 
right? Am I right about that? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, right. so, so Don Adiago no longer has a Burlington County district to run in if she point. would ever want to do that. That's a big town. That's a good point. Yeah. That's yeah. a good point. And the other thing is, is I, I would think for eight years, not definitely, but likely for the next eight years, any, if this were the map, and by the way, I, we should keep saying this over and yeah. over. Yeah. We're talking about these maps as though it's going to be one or the other. It's going to be neither of them. We're just seeing we're just seeing the first crack out of it. We're seeing a yeah. sort of a blurry lines of where it's going to wind up. But we're seeing what the parties it, most want in a dream right. or not quite a dream world, but like in a realistic right. dream world. Right. Yeah. It, God. With some strategy, though. Right. I mean, they they don't want to show their whole hand right yeah. up front. Yeah. Exactly. So so yeah. they may be playing some games here where they're going to say, well, we don't really want Evesham in there, but we're hoping the Karchman says, well, Evesham doesn't belong in six, it belongs yep. with seven or eight, yep. and then they get to move it back without having given anything up. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, a lot of strategy involved here too, and a lot of really smart people doing the strategy. Yeah, Evesham was 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 big in terms of the Republican. Uh, I'm sorry, in terms of the Democratic hopes for that district for the eighth district uh, this last time, and so without it, um, you know, it produced seventeen thousand votes um in the county out of uh, like you know it was half of the votes in Burlington last time so um you know this is sort of an acknowledgement again assuming that it's not just a you know a straw man um it's an acknowledgement that that's not the map that's going to work for them it didn't work for them and so they're sort of blowing up that strategy and coming up with a new one okay so let's let's look at seven and eight because by far to me the most interesting move by the Democrats is is sort of a a realignment of District 7 and District 8. And, and you know, we over, over the years, and I mean, you know, I'm talking 30, 40 years, yeah. uh, you saw a lot of North, you, you saw two North-South Burlington districts yeah. side by side. And now what they're doing is flipping them. And now you're seeing two East-West districts. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks to me like, like the Democrats... Clearly, I mean, it's, it doesn't take a rocket science to, scientist to figure this out. Uh, Democrats think that they can win both of those seats. Yep. Uh, and what they're doing is they're separating Willingboro, which is just, I mean, this is the kind of town that Democrats win 90% of the vote. They're separating Willingboro with, you know, from the seventh. Uh, so let's, I mean, let's, let's, let's talk about the seventh first. Now, you don't have Senator Troy Singleton. He lives in Del Rand. So they've moved, right. they've moved Singleton to the eighth and they've moved Herb Conaway, uh, who is also from Del Rand. He's in the eighth with Senator, uh, with Senator uh, Stanfield. So what you've got in seven now is Assemblywoman Carol Murphy as the, as an incumbent, uh, as an incumbent assemblywoman, and and you know, I I can't believe I'm having a Frank Pilata mm -hmm. moment here, uh, but but you've got let's let's go back to to where the you know where the map is. So so one of the things, and we I, I skipped over this, and I apologize. Hamilton, which is a huge part of the eighth district success, yeah. that got moved into the ninth. Yeah. So that would be Senator Chris Connors, it'd be Assemblyman Brian Rumpf, and it would be Michael Teresi, a new assemblyman from Hamilton uh, uh, and Diane Gove. So under the Democratic map, three Republican assembly members in one district, uh, you know, the, the problem, what I'm, what I'm joking about is a Frank Pelota moment is, is I, I sort of joke that he didn't remember some towns in his district. I cannot recall off the top of my head what town Brandon Umba is from. He lives in Medford. Medford, okay, so, so you have a district here where it's Carol Murphy, you have Brandon Umpha, one Democratic Assembly member, one Republican Assembly member, and no senator. Uh, Micah, tell me about tell me about the seventh. Is that is that a competitive district? As the Democrats have drawn that, um, yes, I do think that um, they'll be relying on the huge um, votes that come out of Mount Laurel. Right, they're going to be um, you know. It is it is competitive. It's it's you know Republicans can do well in Shemong. They can do well in Bedford as they've done. They can do well in Southampton. 
Um, but, um, you know, as you move west, uh, the Democrats will do better in the more suburban towns in that district. And I think, um, you know, as you said earlier, I think they believe that they can win there. Um, this is one of those districts, David, that I think we talked about the schedule for redistricting being different this year and being a year later or a year earlier, in a, you know, later. But um, the fact that they'll have all next year for the legislators to sort and sort of pick their districts, this is one of those where you could potentially see some people, incumbents in the eighth, potentially moving into the seventh if they see an opportunity there. We have a whole year for them to do that. Sure. And, and by the way, go ahead. Go ahead, Joey. My two cents to add to that is just so um, I, I haven't personally calculated 2021 gubernatorial results yet in these districts, but but I do know them, the district results by by presidential race in 2020. Um, this newly this seventh district as proposed here voted for Joe Biden by about 20 points. Republicans do not currently control any seat in a district that blue. Um, they lost their last one uh, when Senator Kip Bateman retired in the 16th district. So Republicans would definitely have the ability to make this competitive. Um, but this would be this this seventh district would be bluer than any district Republicans currently hold. Sure, so and we, we are contribution, which and is we're talking good... about entirely different turnout models too. Yeah. When, you, yeah, when you're talking about odd year and even year, you know we're we're sometimes talking about apples and oranges, and it's yeah. it's good to look at. But I want to also call attention to I mean the the most Democratic part of the seventh district is Penn Saucon in Camden County, which right. had been there for 20 years, taken out a decade ago, and now it's being added in. And Penn Saucon is just a, a heavily Democratic town. It's yep, absolutely. And I miss that one. And the trick here that the Democrats are trying to pull, which is not a trick, but if you can, um, if you can neutralize um, those eastern towns of Southampton and Medford and Shemong by virtue of Penn Saucon and Mount Laurel, you're pulling something off because as we saw in, in, in 2021, um, these were real vote centers uh, in the current eighth district for Republicans. Yeah. And I want to use, I want to use the G word here for a second because you, we, we haven't said it enough, but there's <laughs> some gerrymandering going on on this map. I mean, even a, even a map that is, fairly, I think, conservatively driven to maintain the status quo. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, 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 there, neither the Democrats nor the Republicans can say we didn't, we haven't done a little gerrymandering going on. So I wonder but, if, I was, so I was just looking at the demographics of the 7th and 8th district, and I wonder if the reasoning that Democrats will try to use is, um, interestingly, that this 8th this here that, that they've drawn um, has a higher Black population than the current 7th. The current seventh is a bit of a concentration of like Burlington County's black voters. And it's got, you know, two of its three representatives are black, but actually it is, let me, let me get up the statistics again. Um, it is 26% black. Whereas this um, newly drawn dist eighth district is 28% black, you know, minor difference, but that is the kind of thing that Democrats can point to with Karchman saying that he wants, you know, better and more minority representation and say, well, look, this is why we did this. We put, these two black legislators, Herb Conaway and Troy Singleton, into this district that has more of a minority population than their previous district. Right. Okay. I, th I think it's a great point. And and you know the other thing is is Judge Karchman said he wants more competitive districts. Uh, Republicans have a lot more competitive districts. They they have to than this map. This one. These are these are potentially competitive. Uh, and I, and I want to point out, you, yeah. you, you, Micah, you mentioned about people can move, uh, you know, Gene Stanfield uh, lives in the eighth with Troy Singleton and, and she could move to the seventh fairly easily. Uh, uh, you know, it's, you're, you're talking about a situation too where, where it's easier, it's just easier for some people to move than other people to move. Uh, Senator Singleton is, has got young kids, they're in yep. a school system school in Del Ran. It's, yep. it's not so easy to just sell your house and move your whole family. Yep. Uh, uh, whereas Senator Stanfield might be, you know, number one, she might be more mobile. Number two, there's no, I didn't ask her. So I don't know how mobile she wants to be. You know, it's very possible somebody can say, I like where I live. I like my house and I'm not moving and, and, and I don't have to serve in the, 
in the yeah. state center for the rest of yeah. my life. But but let's talk about eight now. So now you've got, I mean, you've got Willingboro, which is just just a enormous, enormous Democratic stronghold. Right. Uh, but but you've got some other towns here that that are Republican. Yeah. Uh, is this a swing district? My vote is no. I think this I think honestly. Eighth is the eighth here is even bluer than the seventh. I'm not I'm not convinced the seventh is a swing district. The eighth is another five points bluer. I I don't really see how Republicans no. I can see how Republicans bring it within 10 points or something. I don't really see how Republicans manage to win it. And you've got Plumstead in Ocean County in this district. Yep. And you have Upper Freehold. Yep. So so there's some Republican areas there. You also have Assemblyman Ron Dancer in this district. So so this is a uh uh this is a district. I mean, you look at Ron Dancer, by the way. I mean, he he now represents Oldbridge in Middlesex County. Now and now he's in Delaware a district. Yeah. yeah, now he's in a district with 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 Del Ran. Yeah. And and you know, you know, I don't I don't know about continuity of re- continuity of representation with a guy like Ron Dancer. Uh, towns that have never even heard of each other. I mean, yeah, that's about yeah. as night and day as it gets between Upper Freehold and 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 Beverly. Or you know, I mean, it's 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 um it's a big change. But I mean, you know, Upper Freehold and Plumstead have always been orphans, and and so you know, to some extent, by redistricting, and um, yeah. so this takes them from a Republican district and it puts them in a Democratic district. That's a that's a good trick if 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 you can get away with it, you know. <laughs> One of yeah. the and most th- consistent themes across this map, across the Republican map, and across the current map is that nobody really knows what to do with like inland Monmouth and Ocean counties. Right. They're just always right. really awkwardly placed. They never really fit properly in any district. And they're always, you've always have a Plumstead with Delran kind of pairing. Um, yeah. So yeah. there's a lot more of that on the Republican map too. Mm-hmm. It's just, what do you do with these towns? Nobody really I, knows. I will, I will say that, um, you know, and I live in Upper Freehold. I will say that there is a lot in common with North Hanover and Chesterfield and Bordentown we, and Mansfield and Wrights, Town, sort of the um, the base, the joint base towns, uh, and Plumstead right. too, for that matter. So I do see uh, some, if you want to call them communities of interest, I do see some uh, continuity on that side of the district where um, it fits. But you're right, uh, Joey, as they as it goes out toward the Delaware, nothing in common with those towns at all. And I I look at guy like 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 Assemblyman Dancer, and I'm um, I'm thinking, I mean, and you know, I mean, he he's. He's been there a long time. He's yep. he's not a young man, right? Uh, and and I think the only town that he has he has represented in the past is his own town of Plumstead. So you, you sort of got to win. You have to think about well, what is a guy like yep. this? You know, all of a sudden, does he want to go meet? You know, yep. an, another another two hundred thousand people. That's it. Uh, yeah. you know, no, he's got the four towns. Town. He's got he's got Plumstead, Upper Freehold, North Upper Freehold, Canada. right? Now, but that's it. That's yeah. it. That's as far as it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So let's 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 talk. I want to come back to twelve. I mean the the Ocean County districts. They they worked around. Uh, uh, they figured out how to do Lakewood. They figured out <laughs> how to do Tom's River Brick. Uh, you know these are uh, these are Republican towns. These are not not getting touched. Uh, and, and let's come back to, to 12, but I want to go, I just want to keep going up the river a little bit okay. into uh, 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 what the Democrats did in 14, 16. We, I don't think they're that, that different other than the fact that, that we're going to see a stark change of it uh, uh, when, we, uh, when we get to the Republican map. But, but 14, Micah, as as it's drawn fairly much the same, pretty similar and, and pretty democratic. Yeah. This is a, this is status quo for them, right? You know, this is uh, preserving that Hamilton into Middlesex district um, that's existed in some iteration for, you know, the last 30, 30 years. Um, yeah, this is, this is, uh, this is one that the current legislators, Democrats uh, say, okay, you know, this one makes sense to me. I run again in this one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, what 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 this is what these two districts tell me, especially the 16th, is Democrats saying, "Well, we've got some incumbents who live in random places here. I guess we'll have to draw a district that works for yeah. them." Yeah. Uh, the 16th does get a fair bit bluer. Um, yeah, it, well, it goes it's, from. It's a, hard not to notice. 
it's hard to not to notice a, a smart move by the Democrats. They 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 almost very quietly because because it it doesn't look bad on a map in terms of of of, of it being contiguous. But but they they got West Windsor into sixteen. Yeah. And right. they moved some of Hunterdon County out of 16. So, so Shirley Turner's picking up a little bit more of Hunterdon. She could pick up a lot more of Hunterdon. Yeah. And, yeah, and Trenton Republicans and Lawrence not, will drown that out no matter what. Right. Right. And right. doing, and I mean, so that, you know, you know, she, you know, that district, you know, whether, you know, whoever the candidates are, uh, that's a safe Democratic district. Yeah. I thought it was very clever what the Democrats did. Just, just adding West Windsor, it wasn't, it, 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 it's not overwhelming. There's no great shock value to it, other than the fact that it is, West Windsor is a democratic town. And I don't know that 16 was really all that Republican in the last year. Right. Uh, this just makes it worse for Republicans. For Republicans, right, exactly. And we're going to see when we get to the Republican map, what they're trying to do with an Asian district. But I thought you guys wrote this very well today, um, that Democrats are doing well with Asian representation in the legislature with the status quo. So mm -hmm. do you get more out of a uh, concentration district or do you get more out of a district where uh, out of n a number of districts where Asians are getting elected? And, uh, and, and arguably, if you're a Democrat, you can pretty vocally argue that uh, you're doing better with, with things the way they are. Yeah, and you've got like, you know, in a, in a more white previous version of the 16th district, you elected an Asian American assembly woman, Sadaf Jaffer, you add West Windsor, which is majority Asian. Yeah. That's just, you know, slowly adding to that district without completely making it like kind of an Asian vote sink, which is what Republicans yeah. do, which also, you know, that there's a, there's a, there can be good reasons for that. But Sure, yep. yep. And I would imagine a, compelling argument to Judge Karchman about why West Windsor should be in this district, as opposed to let's, you know, not only shouldn't it be there, but let's, let's lock Princeton off too. Right. So, yeah, you, so let's, you, you, you definitely, I mean, being, working in this region, there is a continuity of, of, of this region. Not that that ever matters. And I think we, we've talked about it. We think that that's all overplayed, but <laughs> sometimes, um, but um, you know, these are, these are communities that do act together uh, and in concert in a lot of different uh, ways. And so there is an argument that, um, that you know, diversity wise and um, um, community wise, this is a status quo kind of a situation. Republicans will make their own argument on that as well. And that's for sure. sure. So, 12, which is going to be really interesting when we get to the Republican map, but, but 12, uh, which is, which is Sam Thompson and, uh, uh, and, and it, it was Rob Dan, uh, Ron Dancer and Rob Clifton is, is still there. Uh, I think this is still a Republican district. It's with Manchester and Jackson, Old Bridge. It's, you know, it's, it, I think it's impossible to say that it's not. Yep. I agree. Uh, Oh, totally. Could I don't she, know if there's even a, a single town in this, like, or a town of any reasonable size that voted for, yeah. has voted for yeah. Democrats recently. Yeah. Right. Roosevelt would be the only one. Yeah. And then you said that's tiny. Yeah. So, yeah. so I think, you know, I think if it were the Democratic and by the, you know, let me, let me just go off on a quick tangent. As I spoke to people throughout the day, uh, you know, depending upon where you live, I had a lot of Democrats say, I like that Republican map. And a lot of, you know, and a lot of Democrats were saying, well, you know, I'd, I'd rather I'd rather have I, I think for myself, I'd rather have that Republican map. So so, you know, it's it's all politics is local. But with Ron Dancer out of the 12th, if this Democratic map or something close to it was uh, was adopted, you're talking about an open assembly seat in a safe Republican district. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to think that that Ocean County with Jackson and Manchester are going to look to make a play to get that seat. They're going to there's say a lot that, of yeah. There's a lot of young Republicans um, in Jackson on council. Um, Andrew Kern is trying to run for freeholder. There are others um, as well who would try to make a play. I think for that, if it wound up being an open seat, they'd, they'd screen for that. Yeah, yeah. I think this and, might and be the me, only district in the state that's currently represented by legislators from three different counties. Which is sort oh, of an wow. intriguing fact about it. Wow. Right. Um, Interesting. So that would that could continue. Well, and look, one of the other things that looms large in this 12th district, 
is is you've got Old Bridge at the northern end, and they have a Senate seat with Sam Thompson. And because Sam Thompson is from Middlesex County, Republicans have senatorial courtesy in all of Middlesex County. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I and I, I say this with absolutely no disrespect at all, but Senator Thompson will be 88 on election day 2023. Mm. And we're talking about a map that would essentially be in effect until he's 96. Uh, uh, I think Democrats are looking at, I think Democrats had no incentive at all to chop anything from the South and add from the North because they don't want Republicans to have a Senator from Middlesex County. Interesting. Yeah. So, so let's let's go to before eleven. You, before you move on, on off yeah. of that one, David, I, I, the you know as you know, and we, you, you, we didn't talk a lot about uh, Lakewood. Um, uh, Lakewood is um, not just Lakewood anymore, right? <laughs> they are also right. Jackson and they're Tom's River and they're Howell, and uh, and so they're they're looking. Um, you know, the Jewish community in Lakewood is looking at not only just what happens to Lakewood, but also. Uh, what their voting strength looks like in the surrounding communities. And I'd have to think that uh, with Jackson at the center of the 12th, uh, they'd have to be pretty happy because they'll be able to exert some influence there, growing influence there. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this question. Let's say this map were adopted or something very similar to the Democratic map. Uh, given given the, the Monmouth County presence there uh, and Monmouth expanded a little bit, uh, could potentially Bob Singer from Lakewood be in trouble in a primary? Could Monmouth Republicans, could, could Ned Thompson say, yeah, I, I think I'd like to go to the Senate? Should, can Sean Keene, who was in the Senate until, uh, until Wall got put into a district with Lakewood and had to step down and, and was promised, well, you'll get your chance to come back soon. Uh, and that was a decade ago. Yeah. Uh, uh, is this district on the Republican side this Democratic map on the Republican side, uh, is Bob Singer in any trouble or not? Well, Joey, I'd be interested in your thought. My thought is in a primary, which is a lower turnout affair, Lakewood can crank out as many votes as it needs. Mm -hmm. And so they'd carry Singer wherever he needed to go. Um, you know, that's, that's just my first blush. And I have to tell you, and I, and I, I say this, you know, only with respect, but I, I agreed with that wholeheartedly until November 2nd of 2021, when Jack Chitterelli won Lakewood by a sizable margin, despite the, the VOD endorsement going to, uh, to Phil Murphy. So, so I've well, got maybe, a, you know, more than I, maybe, you know, more there's than something going on. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that a whole hundred percent, but, but, but does, does whatever's going on, is that a function? Is 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 Singer on one side or the other of that? That internecine, scene, <laughs> hate to use a Catholic word, but internecine uh, stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Is Singer on the wrong side of either one of those? Because if not, he benefits from both sides. You know what I'm saying? Where where Chitterelli only had one side and Murphy had the other in that whole thing. You know? Sure, sure. And I and I will and I will say we we we've, we've already talked about it a few times, but but. This is different than anything we've seen before because this is a map that will be adopted 13 months before a filing deadline. And you know, you know, you know, Joey, this will be your first legislative filing deadline. Mike and I have been through them a while. Typically, what we see in redistricting is is these maps come out and you've got a week or two to I'm make your decisions, yeah. do your screenings figure out who's getting the line, uh, uh, go out and get your signatures. Now there's a lot of time for people to, uh, to reflect on what their situation is and decide where they want to go. So, and I think that's just going to be a pattern that you're going to see throughout the state, but yep. let's talk about 11. Uh, I mean, 11 is 11. If you did nothing to it is a swing district. It's got, it, it's, it's, it's a, the only, God, I'm, I'm blanking on this. It's the only split district in That's, the state. At this point you've got it a, is right currently. It is right because right, two is yep. not anymore. So That's you've right. got you've got a Democratic senator 
who who won by you know a couple thousand votes. It, it you know it was it was close on election night, but it wasn't close on election night. It was just that it took election officials forever to count the votes that were already cast. Uh, but but two Democratic incumbents in the assembly lost there to Marilyn Paperno and to, to Kim Mulner. And, and so if you do nothing at all, it's competitive. And, and you've got to be looking at the possibility of Vin Gopal getting a challenge from, from Assemblywoman Paperno or, or Assemblywoman Yulner uh, or, or uh, County Clerk Christine Hanlon. And, sure. and, and I had, you know, when you even look at, at, uh, at the Neptunes, if this is, you know, depending upon the climate, Tom Arnone, the, the county commissioner, uh, looks like Democrats did just a little bit of, of surgical work here <laughs> and and added a little bit. But, Joey, I mean, I knew you were looking at it today. I mean, does it you know, they, they added uh, they added Avon. They they you know, they went a little bit south along there. Uh, is this district that much more uh, more Democratic or more Republican than it was it is right now? That much? No, a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's a tiny bit more Democratic. It's like a point or a point and a half more Democratic, mm-hmm. um, which doesn't sound like a lot. But had this had this map been in place in 2021, we'd probably still have two Democratic Assembly members mm-hmm. or um, or maybe one Democrat and one Republican. Good point. Um, Good so in a district that hosts right. extremely close elections, that's super important. Um, so this map is a map that de- it's sort of Democrats acknowledging, yeah, this is going to be a swing district probably for a while. We don't really have the votes in this area. To make it anything but that, um, but we're going to nudge it however much we can to make it favorable for for Vin Gopal and make it favorable for whatever Democrats might run for the assembly next. And this this map kind of does that. It it makes it just that little scooch more favorable. Yeah, and I've I've got to think that the two assembly women from this district are eyeing the Senate seat. They, you know, probably on election night they were eyeing the Senate seat. So uh, I think that changes a little bit, and we'll talk. When we go through the Republican map, we'll yeah. see that the Republicans, it, yeah. the Republicans went at GoPal yeah. and and uh, uh, are seeking to ex- increase their chances of of flipping that seat. Uh, Republicans uh, I mean, statewide clearly like their chances of expansion in Monmouth. Period. Right. And so right. that's yeah, they're 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 they going to make whatever play they can. They do. And look, I mean, the the Republicans are never going to. Uh, in, enhance their standing and and build their numbers up in the legislature if they don't take a couple of risks and we'll yep. we'll talk about that they their map is bold i mean they took they took some risks they're they're willing to take some incumbents and maybe gamble in order to pick up more seats uh but declan o'scanlan we're all in agreement declan o'scanlan vicky flynn jerry scharfenberger this district they're all good they're fine Right. Right. And, yep. You know, and then on the Democratic map, I mean, we could we could breeze through Middlesex County. Seven pretty much identical. Check 18, 19 and uh, 19, you know, with the exception of Carteret that the you know, the, the you know, a wonderful man named Tom Deverin uh, used oh, to yeah. represent Carteret used to be in a district with Elizabeth and Linden. Uh, yeah. But with except with the exception of Carteret, this district is pretty much exactly as it was in 1973. Wow. I mean, it's just no, it's just no movement at all. And, wow. you know, and, and, you know, the same with 18, with an Edison to uh, East Brunswick district uh, uh, in 18, 17 wow. seems safe. Uh, you know, and then just for, for anybody who doesn't go back that far, that's as far back as these maps go. Right. I mean, that's, right. that's the beginning because before that it was County based still. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so you start going through, you know, we're going to get a little boring, which will enable us to move a little faster through this Democratic map. But but Joe Cryan in 20 is 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 uh, uh, almost almost identical. Nick Scatari, Senate president now, bigger stakes. Uh, his district is is fairly similar. I think he he lost Middlesex. The Democrats took Middlesex borough from him uh, on the on the western edge of his district, uh, with probably good news for him because that's mm. that's a bit of a competitive down. Uh, he picked Rose. He picked up Roselle Park, okay. which is good news for John Bramnick mm-hmm. uh, in the twenty first. Uh, uh, I don't. I mean, we do it quickly. Bramnick's district 
I think may have gotten maybe a little bit more democratic in the democratic map. They've they've added Chatham Township. You already had Chatham Borough. Chatham Township is, do I have it right? They added Chatham Township, right? And he had Chatham Borough. Um, um, I, I don't remember specifically what they already had and yeah. what they added, but I but I do know that yeah. it, it moved about three points to the left. Um, uh-huh. So that's the kind of like like in the like in the eleventh district, like with Van Gopal, it's the kind of change that feels kind of minor until you have a really close election, um, and that's like, oh, that was that was important. So if right. you indeed have uh, this twenty first yeah. district, you're going to have some close races most likely uh, sometime right. this so, decade. So they just, added. Just, they they did have Chatham Borough. So they they did they added okay. Chatham Township, okay. which is the more Republican of the two. They added Madison, which is Democratic leaning. But then you know they they also added. Uh, uh, PPAC Gladstone out mm-hmm. at the end, really tiny, but that'll that'll balance some of it off. So I, I don't know, Mikey, you're going to say something, but I don't think no. It just it think- underscores that strategy that Bramnick always gets slammed for by Republicans, which is to be sort of the older mainstream moderate Republican. And you see why when you look at this map and these towns and, and he's got to, he can't be anything but that uh, given the composition of, of his district and, and just the area that we're talking about. It's, it's just not, it's just not uh, movement. It's not movement conservatives here. Yeah, yeah. So, so the 21st, the three 21st district Republican legislators are the only three Republicans in the state to represent a district that Phil Murphy won. Um, oh, wow. So yeah. even beyond like mm-hmm. representing Biden voters, they represent like Murphy voters. So this is definitely this is like the ticket splittiest district in the state. Um, yeah. But this map stretches it even a little bit farther to yeah. see just how much they're willing to split their tickets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we should adopt that as an official word. Ticket ticket splittiest. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we, we're going to do that. Uh, let, let's just let's just go up the West real fast. Democrats not competing in 23. But it's a very uh, ugly district, so I'll give them that. They really made it uh-huh. horrible looking. Yeah, it really, <laughs> it is, it is, it is. And I hadn't really stared at that one much, but but it is. And and twenty four is 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 solid. Uh, uh, you know, comes. District. Yeah, it, it it is a big district, but uh, but the the depopulation. Interest, it's yeah, the rural- but. But here's the important thing about 24, and it's really the only important thing. It is a solid, solid red district. Yep. But Democrats moved uh, Christian Barranco, a freshman assemblyman who's been there less than a month, who who upset Betty Lou DeCrosse mm-hmm. uh, in a at a convention and then in a primary, uh, and and they added him to 24 uh, uh, and Rockaway Township. Uh, and and, you know, it's got it's got Mount Olive, which you didn't have. There's a little bit of Morris County there. Uh, but it would seem to me that unless uh, Parker Space or Hal Worth says, you know, I've I've had enough of this and I'd like to let the young guy continue yeah. uh, under a Democratic map. Assemblyman Barranco is is oh. either going to be a one termer yeah. or he's going to have to move back into his district. And he right. too has, has young kids. Uh, but, that, and I think that's the only, th- I think that's significant. And then when I look at 25, I mean, I remember in 2019, I thought, I mean, this was, I thought that district was in play for Democrats. Yep. Uh, they, they had great candidates, uh, yep. Lisa Mamani and Darcy Drager. Uh, uh, you had, you had a tragedy in September after the ballot the voting had begun where Senator Bucco, passed away. Uh, his son became a senator, but still had to run for re-election to his assembly seat. It was it was a little messy. And at the end of the day, uh, it wasn't all that close. In the 2020 special, Senator Bucco and Ora Dunn, the assemblywoman, won, you know, because it was a presidential year, uh, more actual votes than anybody's ever won on this 40 district map. So and I thousands think, of them they, were split with Biden. This was a Biden district were, that right? they were carrying they simultaneously, were. same ballot. Absolutely. So, so, and these are, these are voters that are accustomed to splitting tickets. So, I mean, my quick question here is, is, is have the Democrats in their own map uh, said, yeah, we, we've tried a few times. We're not there yet in 25. We're not going to play there. It looks like it legislatively. It looks like it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a really similar district to the current one, partisanship-wise and just boundary-wise. Yeah. So 
they're yeah they're not making a particular yeah. play for it they're not abandoning it either really yeah. but 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 just like you know and these are these are sort of sort of slight of of hand kind of moves they're they're not they're not bold but they're extraordinarily meaningful so what the democrats are doing in this map is is they are you know they they've moved assemblyman barranco to the sussex district and Morris Plains, where Jay Weber lives, mm -hmm. uh, is now not in the 26th anymore. It's in the 25th. Right. Uh, they're trying to create a primary. If this if this Democratic map were to be adopted, right. uh, and I don't think I don't think Morris Plains and Parsippany have ever been in different districts, but if this map were to be adopted, uh, it's a it's potentially a three way primary between uh, Brian Bergen or Dunn. And Jay Weber, uh, a convention fight and a uh, and a primary, and that's uh, I mean, Michael, why do uh, we could probably guess? So so so, yeah. why do you think the Democrats submitted a map that put took two incumbents out of the twenty six, put them in districts with two other incumbents when they really didn't need to? I think well, they could have drawn yeah. this map to not to avoid that. So this is one of those uh, head fakes, right? This is one of those those mm -hmm. those Jedi mind tricks, right? Where yeah. you are trying to scare um, enough Republicans so that you are forcing uh, them to sit down and try and compromise with you and work things out, right? And so if enough incumbents are threatened and screaming, you can't do this, we got to do whatever we can to block this map. Uh, we got to sit down, we kind of come to the table. That's what this is kind of trick is designed for. Am I am I right? Is that sort of what this is doing? I think you I think you're right. I think because we, we we haven't really talked about deal maps. Uh, uh, the clock is ticking. I don't I don't necessarily, and I have no way of knowing this for sure. But my read is is I don't think Judge Karchman would lose any sleep at all if the Democrats and the Republicans called him and said, you know what, we went out the night before, we hammered out a map, we're good. Uh, yeah, and I'm sure is, Ju I'm sure Justice Wallace wishes they had done that. So. <laughs> that is a judge's dream, right? They they don't yeah. want to have to decide. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so so with that, I mean, 26 uh, goes now. This is the this is a Joe Pinot Senator Joe Panaccio, two Oakland Assembly seats goes all the way up to uh, uh, Ringwood and Mawa uh, into Bergen County. So. Uh, uh, Democrats are not going to touch that district, but 26 no longer comes into Essex County and Joe Panaccio would no longer have senatorial courtesy over, you know, over somebody who lives in Fairfield or Verona or West Caldwell. Uh, you know, not unimportant when, when political guys are sitting around drawing these maps and, and they can go in one direction or another. Uh, let's, let's just go around the North and we'll, we'll come back down. I mean, 40, 40, is uh well let's not let's let me change my mind let's <laughs> let's let's go in order because because 27 is interesting in that uh and i don't believe i really don't believe that there was any coordination between the democrats and the republicans on their initial submissions this is this is not the two of them saying all right you're going to do this and i'm going to do that right and and we're going to make karchman feel this way they're just they're not happening so by coincidence, uh, uh, both parties have drawn a 27th district that goes from Roseland to Hillside through Irvington, uh, which, which is, is the kind of town where uh, a Democrat, if, if they don't work really hard, if they leave some votes on the table, uh, they might only come out of Irvington with about 94% of the vote. <laughs> I mean, this is this is a substantial block. It's adding a lot more minority voters uh, with Hillside and Irvington uh, into this district. This is I mean, I remember a decade ago when when they moved Dick Cody into Morris County, uh, some of the Republicans said, well, you know, Cody's never run in Morris County. These are Republicans. Uh, we can beat him. Uh, you know, of course, they they picked the train station towns in Morris County. Uh, that were trending democratic also, but, but now you've got this district. This is, I mean, this is, this is as safe a democratic district now in the state. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's, it's Senator, it's governor Cody. Uh, it's uh, 
Assemblyman John McKeon from West Orange and Assemblywoman Myla JC from, from South Orange. So, you know, Joey, you and I talked about this earlier. What is Irvington now the biggest town in the district? No representation. What do they do? Yeah. Yeah. So, so the most important thing about this change is that, you know, it, it takes what previously had been two majority minority districts based in Essex County, the 28th and 34th, and adds this new one, the 27th, by shifting around some other boundaries. Um, so now it's about 40% black and 35% white. Um, and you've got two white legislators and one black legislator in Mila JC. But yeah, Irvington and Hillside, especially when you start to have open seats, especially when Governor Cody or really any of the three uh, maybe thinks about retiring sometime this decade, you're going to have Irvington and Hillside saying, well, hey, this is a majority minority district. Um, we haven't had anybody from our towns representing us in the legislature for a while. And now we're in this district. But let, let's do something here. Well, let me go. Let me go one step further on that. It's not just we want a legislator. I think there's a point where they're going to say we want a senator, right? And and they want to increase. Uh, 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 Irvington will want to increase their town. They've got a they've got a mayor there named Tony Voss. He he wins that town easily. He he could be a potential candidate. My my read on this, and Mike, I'll see. You know, I I, I may not be right on it. Uh, Cody's going to stay there as long as Cody wants to stay right. there in yep. this district. I think this is a horrible map, a horrible week for John McKeon. Uh, he, he wasn't picked as attorney general. He was a, a finalist, uh, but it, he wasn't picked. Uh, yep. He's probably been waiting a long time for Cody. He's been, he, he's been Cody's assemblyman for 20 years. And, you know, he had to have looked at, I mean, during John McKeon's time as an assemblyman, Dick Cody was was governor a couple of times, uh, you know, once 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 for like 14 or 15 months. So so McKeon's got to have been eyeing the Senate seat. Uh, every assembly member eyes the Senate seat at one point. Right. Uh, you know, is is this one of these situations where where the incumbents get to stay, but someday there's going to be a transition and the clock may be running out on John McKeon? You would have to think that that's a distinct possibility, and and for this to be the democratic map for it to be happening, he's got to say, "Come on, guys, you know what are you doing to me, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm losing my losing my shot. Yeah, I. It's tough to see how um, there'd not be a black democratic nominee after Cody uh, yeah. Is, is yeah retires. Yeah. Yep. So I think there's I think there's some succession planning going on here. Uh, uh, and uh, and and I'm not going to make a I I I don't want to make a, a Dick Cody Logan Roy kind of a, a joke, but but uh, uh, you go to the rest of it. I mean, 34 is exactly the same. Clifton to East Orange. Uh, it's going to be the uh, it's going to be the same question there's been for 20 years, which is uh, will 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 Democrats tell Senator Gill she can stay as long as she wants, or will they finally make a move? But this is this is the familiar landscape. Uh, uh, 20, uh, 28 had to pick up a lot more of Newark yep. in order to uh, 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 have have that district lose Irvington to the 27th. And, and I got to tell you, I am uh, I, I have I, I can't I can't talk about. 28 yeah. and 29 yeah. and I'm going to have trouble in 31 and 32 yeah. and 33 yep. because I don't I can't really tell which parts of Newark are where and which parts of Jersey City are where right. and, and and you know I'm 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 hopeful that uh the Office of Legislative Services will at some point tomorrow put some of this more detailed shape files up and and what wards and what voting districts are are, are where because it's going to be virtually impossible for uh, for the public to comment on those districts, on the splitting of Newark and Jersey City, yeah. uh, in the absence of knowing exactly you know who lives where. But these are these are Democratic districts. The you know once again, and it happens every ten years. I I heard the rumors over the last couple of weeks. Well, maybe we should put Bayonne in with uh, with Newark or put Bayonne with Elizabeth. It never ever happens. Yep. Uh, so what you've well, got these the shapes, big news these shapes are going to matter. These shapes are going to matter, David, because uh, because you saw tonight uh, Jersey City Mayor Fulop is in 
a disagreement with Democrats on the map, yes. splitting, Jersey, splitting Jersey City into three districts instead of two. So this is, a, this is gonna be a, a point of contention. And you know, just, just to be, you know, for those, if, if there's people out there that are, that are new to this, uh, Newark was always split into three mm -hmm. districts. I mean, yep. I remember Cody had a piece of Newark when he was in the state assembly. Yeah. Uh, Jersey City was always split into three until 10 years ago. Right. When they came up with a reason why uh, it was in the, the in, in the best interest of the map to not split them. And 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 I say that deliberately. It was in the best interest of the map. So people came up with a reason why they can't. Uh, it wasn't necessarily the other way around. But now it's split. Uh, uh, I don't know. I can't really talk to what's where, you know, you know, I could I can sort of see. You could sort of see downtown Jersey City in 33, uh, uh, Hoboken still in 33, Weehawken moved to Nick Sacco's district. Right. I, I guess the only thing I can say about this is that is that by splitting Jersey City into three parts, everybody has avoided a, a war or a war at in Hudson County. We're not going to have a uh, we're not going to have a Sacco stack primary we're not going to you know we're not going to see uh anybody go in and 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 really mess with uh with sandra cunningham's seat if she wants to run again so yep. so yeah, that's what i was going to say actually. Oh. yeah go just ahead. that this doesn't necessarily look like an incumbent protection map but it kind of is where um especially for the 33rd district um where you currently have you know a union city rep senator and then a hoboken assemblywoman um, or yeah, assemblywoman and a Jersey City assemblyman. Um, in order to get those three together, um, you've just got some leftover Jersey City that you can't put into the 31st or 33rd, which makes them too right. big. Um, right. So either you have to start messing around with those districts and take Union City out or Hoboken out, which is what Republicans chose to do, um, or you split Jersey City three ways. That's just, that's sort of the name of the game with, with New Jersey's, you can't split small municipalities right rule you end up with either with these tough choices of do you mess with the incumbents or do you mess with jersey city basically right and and one quick observation and then we'll, we'll move north is is this is this shows a little bit about the growth of hudson county's population uh uh they they no longer needed any of bergen county edgewater and and fairview are no longer in a hudson district they're back in bergen harrison uh uh, is no longer in a Hudson district. It's back in a Newark district, mm -hmm. uh, which is where, where, which is where it was for the first eight years of the uh, uh, of the maps. And and I mean, I mean, the last time Harrison had a legislator, it was uh, it was Mayor Frank Rogers. He was mayor mm -hmm. for for close to fifty years, but he he was actually the senator from Harrison and Essex County. So uh, uh, there, you know, there's there's a little bit of history there, but it's it's not really continuity of service. Somebody, I mean, that's the deal, right? Somebody's got to be, so you've got winners and you've got losers and somebody's got to lose it. In this case, it's it's Harrison uh, now separated from the rest of Hudson. Uh, 36, Paul Sarlo's district. Uh, I mean, got, I, I remember when Paul Sarlo first got to, you know, when he first won an assembly seat 20 years ago, that was a swing district. Right. Uh, and and uh, he's made it safe. And uh, uh, I don't think anybody's touching I don't think anybody's touching that. Uh, 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 by the way, a, a, a note, please, to the the map makers. Uh, uh, terrible use of blue on thirty six and thirty seven because it's it's very hard to see that. But thirty seven also safe. Democrats didn't do anything in thirty eight to uh, to damage Joe Lagana's uh, chances or Lisa Swain or. Or, or Chris Tully, and then you get up to 39. Can I make a point and, about 36 really quick? Yeah. Uh-huh. The, the big question for me there is not so much partisanship, but that is a plurality Hispanic district. Um, and it's got three white legislators. Um, so you kind of got a question a little bit like the 27th where you're probably not gonna dump any incumbents purely for demographic reasons. But if you've got retirements, you're gonna wanna start looking at, okay, how do we make this legislative slate um, more representative of this district? Because that district has changed a lot. Um, in terms of adding Hispanic population. Yeah, and I'm the heir apparent, I'm coming next, right? It's my turn next, yeah, kind of a thing, right? Right, right. I mean, you've got, you've got a lot of 
you've got a lot of talent in that district. You've got a deep, deep bench in that district too. Uh, and, and, you know, Sarlo, you know, he is, he is a relatively young man as senators go. Uh, you know, he is, he's, He's in his fifties. I mean, it's, it's, you know, the that's fact at the that low end of the average, that's actually it, below average. I think yeah. it really is. So, yeah. so I, you know, I mean, only in his thirties when I was born. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so Paul Sarlo is, uh, you're making me feel old, but, but, but Sarlo is going to be there for, for a, a long, a long time as it, you know, Republicans aren't going to take him out. You know, he's, it's, it's, it's a function of making sure you continue relationships with the organization, uh, yeah, the 37, there's no changes, but you go up to 39. And again, it looks like a little bit of aggression, not all that much mm -hmm. uh, to make 39, maybe a little, you know, more friendly to, to Democrats. Uh, this is another district where Democrats have tilted at the windmills for Yes, for the have. last few cycles yeah. and yeah. and gotten absolutely nowhere but Ridgewood's now in 39 and and Ridgewood is a uh, uh, a pretty strong democratic town uh you know it, it Alpine, you know you, you you go to the east these are these are small towns but they they seem to have nibbled on it is this I don't think this district's going democratic in 2023. Uh, well, that's that's but, that's a good point, David. Like, how much? And, and the answer we, is is it depends on who you're talking to, but and and what their frame of mind is. But um, how much do you draw maps for now versus the end of the decade? You know, and 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 as we see things changing, and as you yeah. see opportunities for Democrats a couple of years down the road, and this is one where they have seen opportunities before, and maybe they think that there are opportunities again for them right. in the future. And ask yeah, that so question. Ask that question to Andrew Zwicker, because that's exactly what happened in the 16th. That was that was a Republican district. Right. They they did the same thing. Let, let's add South Brunswick and let's add Princeton. And yeah. within a couple of years, it's it's turned. Uh, you know, I I don't think th I think 39 is fine now, but but it's not one that I would uh, I would bet the house on for the next eight years. Right. Joey, I, I cut yeah. you off. I'm sorry. No, I kind of cut you off. But so, yeah, so this proposal moves the district like six points more Democratic or something, which is pretty sizable, but probably not enough to like unseat Shapizi and the, the two assembly members, the two Republican assembly members right now. Um, but the Republican map actually does something really similar. It, the Republican 39 will get there, obviously, when yeah. we switch to the Republican map, but I figure it's important context here. Um, also has this kind of same movement, moves a fair bit more Democratic. Um, so part of it, you know, is Democrats, you know, trying to add Democratic areas and make the seat more favorable to them. Part of it is just simple demographics, like um, the, you know, the most urban parts of North Jersey were the parts that were the districts that were most overpopulated. And when you've got these inner suburban districts like 39, you just have to move them in. Um, you have to take up like, you know, that sort of northeastern area of Bergen because 37 can't take it anymore because 37 had to move in. Um, and so on and so forth. It's a whole domino effect. It's hard not to make the 39th at least a little bit more democratic because it's just well, everything it's is moving inwards. Interesting you're talking about it now, Joey, because you talked about it in the South as well. And it's where districts tend to get landlocked, where you start to limit their options. There's nowhere else for them to go. So you you do, yeah, you see that on both ends of the map. Yeah. All right, let's let's go over to the uh, to the Republican map. Uh, and this is... Uh... Which thank you Republicans for making your map like so much more legible. <laughs> yeah. This is so much nicer looking. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Joey? I don't I don't even want to joke about that because because I don't know for sure whether whether Justice Wallace yeah. gave points for for the, the Christmas and the legibility of of how somebody's map was suggested. You just submitted. gave him an so, idea for rationale to cite. I know, Phil, that's been three weeks. I chose the Republican map simply because I could read it better. That's right. Yeah, I could read it better. And and when it amplifies, he, he would say, you know, his amplification would be, well, I could read it better because it looked better. And that would yeah. go, I, I got to stop. I got to stop. But let's let's go to the Republican map in in South Jersey. And I mean, and, and there's some interesting things going on. Uh, uh, one of them is, you know, total confidence in Mike Testa and right. Antoine McClellan, you know, yep. and uh, uh, they are, you know, District 1 left pretty much on its own. 
uh, as it was, and yep. and and they feel fine there. Uh, two, you know, we don't have to have the conversation again. Republicans also moved Galloway into this district, and, and Joey, it was you said it was just a little bit different on the west. Yeah, uh, the Republican map has Port Republic and Egg Harbor City in it. The Democratic map does not. There's no other trade-offs. That's the only tiny change. Those towns are both kind of Republican, but not like that Republican. So the 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 effects on the overall competitiveness of the district are really minor. So swing district for another eight years. Swing district that's in, a tiny bit more Democratic second. than it was before, but yeah, totally yeah. dogfight for a district. So I have to tell you whether whether this map gets approved or not, the the trophy of the year for passive aggressive huh. is what the Republicans did in the third district. Uh, right. uh, they took Steve Sweeney's hometown uh, and put it in the fifth district with the city of Camden. And they took John Bersicelli's hometown of Paulsboro and put it in the fifth district with the city of Camden. Republicans are saying, you know, if, if you guys want Sweeney and Bersicelli back from Gloucester County, you've got to do it in a district that really should be uh, electing minority legislators. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this, is that, the that, this, is, this is the passive aggressive move. Of yes, it is. Yes, it is. And it's the Dura protection map, which is, mm-hmm. which is amazing. He's a, he's a darling of the Republicans at this point. And, uh, and they are looking to not only, um, you know, protect their turf in South Jersey, but expand it. And uh, they think it runs through Ed Durr's district and, and keeping him and, and, and jettisoning the, uh, the Democrats from coming back in two years. Yeah. And also, I mean, it, th- th- this is kind of speaking to their confidence in Durr and McCarthy, Patrick right. and Sawyer to hold this district because the partisanship stays pretty much the exact same as it currently is. So, you know, this district that has elected Democrats for a long time, you're not changing it that much partisan wise. You're changing it from the perspective of you can't have easily have Steve Sweeney and John Berzik Telly coming back. So they, right. Repub- this is signaling Republicans are confident that without Sweeney and Berzik Telly, and I guess Talia Farrow does still live in this district. Um, but without Sweeney and Bersicelli in the equation, it won't be competitive even with about the same partisanship. Yeah, this is the incumbency. This is the this is the uh, this is the continuity map for the at least in the South for the Republicans, right? You know, it's, yeah. the, it's the flip right. of the rest of the state. They're looking to do something different here than they are in the rest of the state. Yeah, ground so, ground that they see themselves gaining already. Right, and so you've got you know you know if this map were to be, and by the way, I mean I I, I should just state the obvious, which is. If Steve Sweeney wants to come back to the Senate from the third district, this map doesn't bar him from doing so. Yeah. It just means that he has to move from yep. West Deptford to yep. someplace else. Yep. And Absolutely. and and so, you know, this is, you know, they're they're sort of gonna be, and I guess, I guess, I guess we should all make a mental note of it. Uh I think it is January 8th of 23. People have to be because you have to be in the district for a year before yeah. you take office, not yeah. before the election, before you take right. office. So that's the date. If Steve Sweeney hasn't sold his home and moved by by January 8th of 2023, then he's not running for the legislature again. And at and, least and not he, in the third, yeah. At least not in the at least not in the third. Uh is I mean, this five <laughs> five and six for the Republicans is solid. Uh is is district four a sleeper? They did, totally. they did some tinkering. Yes. They added Winslow yes. and Waterford yes. and Monroe and, you know. And, and Buna yeah. and Buna and Buna. Buna. Yeah, yeah. They moved uh, it like is, eight points to the right. This would have voted yeah, for Jack Chitter yeah, yeah. last year. This is 100% yeah. Uh, yeah. competitive district. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this district, you know, yeah. I mean, it was, it was, these districts were all Chitter I mean, these were, this is, this is Chitter country, but, but, and I'll, I'll throw this out there and I'm going to say to everybody, I, I'm, 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 I'm putting, I'm looking at who would run in that district. I haven't spoken to anybody. I don't know if it's at all possible, but I could tell you that the last Republican Senator from that district, the guy that Fred Madden beat by, by like 30 votes after South Jersey Democrats put $5 million against them. Uh-huh. 2003, 5 million was a lot of money back then. You know, fun, funny as it seems, it was a lot of money back then. Uh, but George Geist is still now just 66 years old. He's That'd no longer a judge. He has returned to politics. 
uh, I mean, this, he lives in Gloucester Township. Would, wouldn't it be wild if George Geis came back and yeah. reclaimed his old seat after he was a tenacious ago. campaigner? He really was. Yeah. Um, it'd be wild. You also have uh, Mike Testa's mother is now in yes. office in this district, right? Yeah, that would be the <laughs> first time in history you had a mother's son. <laughs> you've had father's sons. You've had a father daughter. You've never had a mother's son. Right. Uh, you know, but but you know, and 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 you know. I, we, we talk about this all the time as to who you look for for candidates as you begin recruitment. I mean, you know, and, and I say this with respect to Judge Geis, nobody remembers him from 18 years ago. People don't know their legislators today. They don't remember somebody from 18 years ago. But what you can't change is a guy who's got the tools, a guy who's got the skill set, who knows how to run a campaign, who knows how to to go out and knock on doors. That's how George Geis split this district the first time. So mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just, just a guess. I think for, if this Republican map were to be approved, which it will not be, uh, at least not exactly in its current right. form, I think four is sort of a sleeper place that South Jersey Democrats have to keep an eye on. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. The, the incumbents there ha cannot rest on this. And by the way, what you just said about George Geis is not so far fetched when you consider that Dick Zimmer tried to make a comeback this year and uh, and uh, Pappas tried to make Mike Pappas right. tried to make a comeback this year. So th there is absolutely uh, precedent for these guys continuing to be interested in, in a return to the uh, legislature. Yeah. So let's let's look. I mean, Republicans left seven pretty much the same as it's always been. You know, they 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 river, came river, into river. Burlington and uh, uh cleaned it up a little bit. They've added Bass River and Washington Township Tabernacle that had been in the ninth. They, they added Mullica. Hamilton is still there, but it lost Waterford. So that was that was sort of the trade-off for District 8. They they're, they took a gamble here. They, they, they offloaded Waterford from a tough district. I mean, Gene's, you know, we didn't know that Gene Stanfield was going to win the day before yeah, the election. Yeah, and that's a sizable uh, town. Yeah, a lot of so, votes there, yeah. So they've moved Waterford out as part of a gamble to see if they can play in four. They've supplemented it a little bit with Bass, uh, Bass River, uh, which is you know, Republican. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But just, I think just Tabernacle point is out, the big player, more yeah, more so yeah, than Bass River. That's true. That's true. Yeah, that's true. yeah. and and right. Bass River. I mean, here here you have here you have Bass River in a congressional district. It's with Homedell, and in a legislative district, it's with Hamilton. And and you know it it just shows it just shows that that you know communities of interest are in the eye of the beholder. I think when you're yeah yeah when you're putting yeah, these maps yeah. up. But but eight well, I think they, I, I a lot of I this district, a lot of this district. If you ask people, just generally and not even politically about communities of interest, a lot of them share a common school district. They they are all mm -hmm. in the Lenape School District and that yes. part of the district. Yeah, yep. It's true. That's true. But you know, you look at you look at the Republican map. Eight's fine. They're not they're not playing with their income. You know, with with, with incumbents down here. So so right. nine is good. Ten is good. They they did they, they did. I'd say uh, I've got to stop moving my mouse because I cannot pretend to be Steve Kornacki. This is not my big board. <laughs> but but uh, you know, they did the same. They there weren't. Joey did a lot of work on this when the when the census numbers came out. There weren't a lot of options with Lakewood. Uh, they, yeah. I just think it's just quickly, it's interesting that they both settled on the same one. Yeah. yeah because uh, of the size of the town, because of the, yes. the population, there wasn't a whole lot. Uh, they could do. Right. So let's, let's look at 14 because 14 and, and, you know, what they were doing in central Jersey is where the Republicans are being most aggressive. Aggressive. So, yeah. Old. Yep. so what they did in 14 is they took Linda Greenstein uh, out of 14 and put her into 17. She lives in Plainsboro. Yep. She wouldn't be in that district anymore. Uh, and, and although we uh, go back is, to that mobility, that mobility yeah. argument, right? Can, oh, she'll, yeah. and she'll yeah. move, she'll move to Hamilton in a second if she yeah. has to, or, yep. or East Windsor. But, but this district, I, I did figure out this, this district, uh, Chitterelli won this district with 55% of the vote. 14. Yeah. 14. Uh, doesn't, the doesn't new surprise me when you look at the that, new 14th. Yeah. When you look at that Western panhandle of Monmouth, those are, and picking up Jackson and Plumstead as well. That's the real merging that with the other part of, of Mercer 
those are those are Republican towns. Those are very Republican towns. Um, and yeah. we talked about in the Democratic map, you got to figure out what to do with them and to put them in. You know, there's there's some there's it's contiguous. Right. I mean, it's it's I should say it's compact, somewhat compact. Um, but uh, yeah, this is not this is not a district she would love. For, for any so means. so so we're sort of looking at things with the assembly could do funky things with the two assembly members as well. Right. Well, especially since, and I, and I, I, I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this, but, but it's not a secret. Those two guys, Benson and D'Angelo, they don't like each other. Uh, and, and, you know, a, uh, imagine if, if Senator Greenstein said, I'm not going to run in this new district. I've, yeah. I've been in the legislature for 20, 24 years and it's, it's, it's time to retire. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think she's anywhere near ready to retire. I yeah. think she's ready for another fight, but. And you, you have, but, this is a deep, this yeah. is a deep district because you have Dave Freed, who's a, who's a, a giant in the district, the mayor yeah. of Robbinsville. You mm -hmm. have Janice Miranoff, the mayor and the chair, chairwoman of the Democrats uh, in the uh, in Mercer, um, mayor of East Windsor. Um, there are a lot of people who would like to take a shot. And I don't know if they would do it in this district as Republican as it is, but, but by putting them all together and sort of forcing them on top of each other, um, you know, that, that, that creates some, some tough decisions. Right. And and this will be tough for the Republicans, I would think, because because, you know, the, the conventional wisdom is you want to run a Republican out of Hamilton who's going to keep Hamilton close because you're going to win, you know, everything. You know, with the exception of East Windsor, you're going to win the uh, the Ocean Mammoth part fairly right. well. If Republicans in Ocean County say, well, we'd like to get a uh, a, a fourth senator. And they go to play with Jackson for the Senate. Hamilton could overpower them. Yeah, and, absolutely. And there is yeah. a there is a candidate recruitment risk there. But but just and I just want to keep track. And I know I, you know we, this is this is taking a while. But I and I hope people are still watching. My phone keeps ringing, so the people who are calling me are not watching me. And we'll I'll have to have conversations <laughs> about that later. Uh, but but just to keep to sort of keep the tally going, you've got you've got four and fourteen now as potential Republican pickups. Yep. In the you know, right environment. Yeah. Yep. In the right environment. And, yep. you know, that could take it to that could right now could take it to a 22, 18 Senate, go yep. over to district 11, uh, where Senator Gopal is, uh, with Assemblywoman uh, Paperno and Yulner and, and uh, Republicans nibbled around the edges on this yeah. district. In a different and, way than saw the Democrats. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They, so they got rid of, they, they replaced Red Bank with Rumson. Yeah. They went up to, to Atlantic Highlands and, and Highlands. I mean, my friend Art they Gallagher went. is probably you know, licking his chops on, on, on this kind of a race. Uh, and they, they took Neptune, Neptune city, I think out of it. Yep. Uh, so, so this district, you know, still hugely competitive, but uh, 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 Jack Chitterelli got 53% of the vote in what would be yeah. the new 11th on a Republican map. Yeah. 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 Just like how the Democratic map nudged the district such that the Democratic Assembly members might have won re-election, this map yeah. nudges it just enough to the right that that uh, Senator Gopal might have lost re-election. Right. Um, yeah. right. So, you know, this is arguably the single most competitive district in 2021, given that it was the only one that had flips, or that, 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 that split, split its ticket. Oh. Um, and so when you have that kind of district, little nudges are going to be all it takes. Mm -hmm. So what is Judge Karchman going to say when he hears people at the hearing uh, tomorrow night I'm, I'm, or, or Wednesday night? And I'm, and I'm sure this is going to happen, uh, saying, how are you endangering the only uh, Asian American right. in the state Senate? Why are right. you why are you gendering, you know, gerrymandering that? I mean, that's, you know, yet it's a split district. So. So any change you make, one way or the other, is, is it? This goes back to that philosophical argument we talked about, David. Is it better to have a map where Asian members of the assembly are being elected in uh, in, in in districts now, status quo districts, or is it better to create a, 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 a majority district um, and concentrate it? And uh, you know, I, I know how I would feel if I were part of that minority group, I would say, you know, we're doing 
better under the current map, right? And, and under the current scheme. And, uh, you know, we don't want just to carve out. We want to be able to compete in lots of places. And taking that away is not such a good thing for us. I will right. say, I I'm think- not sure how much this district applies to that argument necessarily. The, the Democratic proposal has the population at 4.9%, or sorry, 5.2% Asian. And this proposal has it at 4.9% Asian. You would never really think of this 11th district as an Asian opportunity district, right. save for the fact that Senator Gopal is a really good campaigner and he's the one who won the seat in 2017. Good point. Um, so you can argue it from like a current incumbency perspective of, yeah, this is the only Asian American in the state Senate. It's right. the only one maybe who will be able to be in that role for the next little while. Um, you but, can't argue it so much from like an Asian concentration or community of interest perspective because they're just on the counties. Rather than, it is. Rather than, yeah, yeah. It is. And, and Paperno and Yulner, you know, turned out to be good campaigners too. And, you know, and, 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 and so is Christine Hanlon. So, you know, this, this map, you know, I, I would, without knowing who the, you know, I would assume, let's, let's assume just for a second that it's, it's Marilyn Paperno, Assemblywoman Paperno is running against Vin Gopal in this district. Uh, I mean, this, you know, I would say this is a, a sort of toss up moving toward the Republican side. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is not an easy one. And just, just cause I'm trying to keep count here. Uh, so here we are in central Jersey and, and, you know, if, yeah, if, if Republic, you know, if, if 2023 is a bad year, it's this, it's, it's Phil Murphy's second midterm. It's, you know, if, if, if president Biden hasn't improved his, his yeah. standing, you know, you had district four, district 11, district 14. Mm-hmm. And right now, before we've gotten anywhere else, we're looking at, we're looking at a 2119 Democratic majority. All of a sudden, yeah. this has started getting a little interesting yeah. uh, in terms of a, a state with a million more. And I, I want to say it because I think it's important. In a state that's got a million more Democrats than Republicans, we're actually looking at a map uh, that that is putting Republicans, uh, you know, if the stars and the moon align in the right environment and if they could raise the money, all of a sudden they're in play. And that's, that's sort of astonishing. That's, that's interesting on this map. Yeah. Uh, the, that's the advantage of having 40 districts to play with instead of 12, right? The right. congressional map where we just came, you know, where Republicans are no longer just looking to, you know, a couple of districts uh, to nibble around the edges. They can, they can, they can shoot for five and, and have that make a big difference. Yeah. So now let's, now let's go to where the Republicans are, are taking a, a gamble, you know, where, where their risk is. Uh, uh, we talked about Oldbridge and, and District 12. Uh, this new District 12 that the Republicans drew uh, puts their Republican delegation in danger. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a, this is, I think this is a swing district. Chitterelli got 52% of the vote on this as this map is drawn here. And, and uh, Monroe has been sort of edging toward the Republican side, but it's not there. Yeah. You know, maybe they're later in the decade, but it's not, it's not there. And East Brunswick, uh, you know, I remember when it was competitive, it's not really competitive anymore. And, and, and again, I look at what the Republicans have done here. Uh, not only are they looking to sideline uh uh, yeah, Vin Gopal, but yeah. you have Assemblyman Sterley Stanley, who is uh, uh, South Asian American. He's in that district, and and this is sort of a uh, this is a swing district, also. Uh, mm-hmm. So the gamble here that the Republicans are making, and you know, and Al Al Barless, their chairman, smart guy, you know, I think he knows what he's doing here, but it's it's a gamble. It's saying, well, you know, we're either going to go for the gold or, you know, or, or we're not, uh, you know, this map where I just described to you, you know, they could be at 19. Now, suddenly they could be back down to 18. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, and I think what they're doing here, and again, I, you know, there's, there's no nice way of saying this. Uh, Senator Thompson's going to be 88 on election day, 2023. Right. Right. And and, you know, I, I, I sort of wonder uh, whether they're looking at a long term plan and they're saying, well, you know, is it responsible for us to draw an eight year map for an 88 year old candidate? Uh, uh, this district, I mean, let me ask you both. Uh, 
winnable for Democrats, winnable for Republicans. Yeah, I think it's very winnable for both. And I think that, as you were saying, this is a trend that we're that I'll point out again when we get to like Bergen County in North Jersey. But in general, Republicans are raising their ceiling and lowering their floor mm-hmm. on what they could do in good and bad years. Um, they're raising their ceiling so that in a really good year, like in a year that's 2021 or even a little bit better for them, they could win 20 seats. They could even win 21 seats. They could just barely eke by with that majority. They want to be able to yeah. just barely get over that finish line. Um, but in a bad year, if, I don't know, say Mike Testa gets elected governor in 2025 or Donald Trump gets re-elected pre- or gets elected president again in 2024, and you've got a, um, a midterm with a Republican in office, you could see them falling to... 10 seats, nine seats. Like there's just, there's a lot of places for them. to. It's fall a gamble. This yeah. This so. is a gamble map for Republicans. This is, this is go big or, 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 you know, we'll, right. we'll regroup, we'll regroup in, in eight years. And, and okay. one other thing, and I, you know, I, I, I think it's, it's fair to say now we're talking about, we're talking about a lot of districts on the table uh, for Republicans with yeah. more to come. And I don't know where they get the money to run all these races. You know, you're talking about target state Senate races. I mean, you know, they they didn't necessarily need it last year. Yes, there was, last year was a weird year, but, you know, they spent $10 million to be, you know, to be Gene Stanfield and they didn't. They spent 10 million, uh, you know, on 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 the Mazio race uh, against Palestine and they didn't win. But, but we're talking about, you know, 5 million here and 5 million there. And all of a sudden, you know, that, that old saying, you're talking about some real dollars. I don't know where the money comes from, but well, well, you, is- you just you just hit it though, David. Uh, and I've heard this from a number of Republicans. Um, they see, you know, the 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 waste that Democrats have made of, of all these riches uh, and not make good use of them in legislative races, and they think that they can compete, not forever, not indefinitely, but for now, they think they can compete with less. They think that money is less of a factor than it could otherwise be, right? Or than we've seen in the past. They think that which is a great is strategy not. until it's not. Oh yeah, and absolutely. It, I mean, been... yeah, you can't bank on it, right? But it just yeah. happens to work. Happens to be working for them right now. Yeah. So let's let's go let's go back up through Middlesex because Republicans did some some bold things here. So let's look at the new seventeenth, uh, which which starts in West Windsor. Uh, and and Linda Greenstein in Plainsboro and Andrew Zwicker in South Brunswick. So they've they've put two Democratic senators in one district uh, that that is would would be if this map were adopted fairly new terrain uh, for both of them. And again, you know you know I, you know we're 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 probably living in a fiction fictional land here because because. If this map were adopted, Senator Greenstein, in my opinion, is going to move to uh, to Hamilton or East Windsor or someplace in that 14th, and that's where she's running. So it's, it probably doesn't even make sense to 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 talk about it that much. But this is this is an Asian uh, opportunity district. Uh, Sadaf Jaffer's already there, but they would have to, you know, you have you have you have Zwicker who just got there. Uh, uh, and Joe Danielson from Franklin, uh, who is white. So this is another district that would be, uh, you know, a question of what's our transition plan down the road once once incumbents move on. Uh, There's no also a bit of an interesting this- thing. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. There's just an interest- bit of an interesting thing where this district is one where a lot of the towns in it are sort of based around Princeton. They're like almost Princeton suburbs, especially Montgomery, Plainsboro, and West Windsor but the district doesn't include Princeton itself. Um, That gets put back in the 15th where it was before this cycle. Um, So you've got this kind of interesting community of interest dynamic where this district is clearly designed to make the 16th and north of it more competitive. And it's also designed to be an Asian plurality district. But as a weird side effect, it kind of breaks apart um, this area in an odd way. So it's sort of a shiny ball that they're waving in front of Judge Karchman, Mm -hmm. hoping that he'll He'll look so much at what's happening in 12 and 17 and and 18 and 22, yeah. and, and he won't pay as much attention to 16. But 17, I mean, no matter what, however the Democrats, if this were the map, which it will not be, however the Democrats settle this all out, uh, you know, this 
this is their seat. And, and, you know, the same thing in 18, I mean, this is a change where they're, they're, they're going from New Brunswick to Plainfield. Uh, uh, people should not be astonished by that. Uh, it was New Brunswick to Plainfield for 20 years right? Uh, before they got changed, but now it goes into Scotch Plains and to Fanwood. Uh, uh, that district with Piscataway has Senator Bob Smith and Senator Pat Dignan. So now you have two, you know, literally one on top of another of Democrat on Democrat senators, uh, you know, four senators, two districts. Uh, and I, and, you know, that's bold. I just, I just sort of wonder if it's, if it's, uh, if it's too bold. Uh, but again, that's going to be for the Democrat, if this were the map, uh, this will be, this will be how the Democrats will to, to work it out. And then, and then you go look at 22, uh, what they've done for the Senate president uh, is, is he's still got Lyndon Rawway and Clark in Union County. So you have the, the Union County Democratic chairman, the second most powerful uh, person in New Jersey state government. And, and you're, you're giving him a, a district that is significantly different by adding Edison. I have, you know, I have no doubt that 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 Senate President Scutari will stay in this district, uh, but you know, Mike and I don't think either of you disagree with that. Uh, right. The question is, what do they do in this district where you now have Linden and Rawway? Uh, this is a, uh, this is uh, uh, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's on the verge of being a uh, a minority majority district or 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 already is, but. But it seems to me that the people that ought to be worried in this district are Jim Kennedy, right. Assemblyman from Rawway, and Rob right. Karabinchak, the Assemblyman from Edison, because this is three white incumbents in yeah. a district that ought to be electing some Asian Americans. Is that yeah? Is that it's thirty six percent white and thirty percent Asian. So yeah, they're definitely okay. wow. Um, and I mean, I would personally just looking at this map because it kind of makes my head hurt a little bit to figure out which district is the real successor to what, I would essentially argue that 16 is a new district here and that 22 is functionally eliminated. Like the like our current 20, current district 22 is functionally eliminated. Um, you've kind of got okay. 17 taking the place of 16, more or less, because it's got two of its incumbents. Mm -hmm. 16 being basically new, it has one incumbent. It takes territory from a lot of random places. 18 is kind of the successor to 17. 22 is kind of the successor to 18. And then what's currently 22 is just totally blown up. You got Plainfield in one place, you got Linden in another place, you got Edison dominating the Linden district. It's kind of chaotic. Um, so I don't know, that was that was my best attempt to make sense of these districts, just from purely like geographic perspective, what exactly is where, because they're very mixed up from what they currently are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't disagree with that. It's true. Uh, so so now now let's let's look at 16. I mean, this is this is where Republicans, you know, in a in a perfect storm, this is where they get to shared control. This right. would be a 2020 Senate with two Senate presidents, maybe unless somebody defects or somebody makes a deal. But but uh, Mike and I have seen that in our, you know, in our careers. We, you know, this wouldn't be the first time we've seen a, a 2020 Senate and, and a lot would happen, you know, have to happen and $50 million would have to be spent to to get there. But but 16, I mean, this is now this is now Roy Fryman and no other incumbents. Uh, you know, I don't know who the Republicans would would run. I presume that Mayor Matt Mensch of Bridgewater would be would be in there. It doesn't doesn't have as much hundred in county as it used to. It, this no. is this is sort of that old fashioned Somerset County seat. I mean, is this uh, could Roy Fryman beat Matt Mensch in this district? If you had asked that question, you know, eight years ago, yesterday, yeah, right, 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, 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 but now Somerset Democrats are are feeling their oats, and um, you know, would would run. It would. This would be. This would be a, a really um, very much of a swing district. I think this would be a tough one for either side. It, both sides would run very strong. Uh, Democrats would like their chances. Republicans would like their chances. This would be. This would be at the top of the target list every race for the rest of the, the, the map. 
you know, every would second. would Democrats and I, I, I just I, I look back to 17 for a second, uh, you know, with with Plainsboro and South Brunswick do do Democrats go to I mean, and this would be the irony of, of Andrews Wicker telling Peg Schaefer, I'm not moving for you. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to say where I am and I'm going to win yeah. the Senate. But but do now the Democrats beg Andrews Wicker to move into the 16th in order to hold that district. Uh, uh, and Fryman, by the way, has won three elections. He's a pretty good candidate, too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's a so I, I don't know. But but 16. So now just just keep in tally four, 11, four, 12, 14, 16, five Republicans are, are doing a map with five districts in play. Uh, so you go up to 21. But don't put, don't put 12 in there for in terms of Republicans flipping, because that would be. Yeah, well, yeah. that's true. That's true. Yeah, you're right. That's already theirs. Uh, uh, so so you go to 21. You know, this district gets a little bit more uh, Republican. They don't have Roselle. Uh, I can't tell if they have Roselle Park or not. I think they do have Roselle Park. But my calculations like, found it being staying about the same partisanship wise. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, just to to you know, and this is this is to what Joey was saying. Uh, Phil Murphy got fifty one percent of the vote in right. this district. That I'm saying John Bramnick and Nancy Munoz and and Assemblyman Matsukudas can can hold. I mean, this is this is exactly the kind of district that could fall at some point. It's a, you know, it's, it, and, and, and look at this in the totality of what Republicans are doing in their first map out of the gate is they're bold in certain areas. Uh, in past years, we'd have seen them play it a little bit more conservatively and say, well, you know what, let's, let's figure out how to get Bedminster into 21 and let's not risk this. So they're, they're, they're putting a lot of, uh, uh, they're putting a lot of faith in John Bramnick, who has shown that he can win this district. Uh, 20 is virtually the same, except that, that Hillside 20, we, you know, we talked about we talked about 27. Uh, uh, so incredibly similar of Irvington to Roseland. So we don't have to we don't have to talk about this again. I it's not just similar. It's identical. It. It's identical. Yeah. I, I still can't see what they did in Newark on this map either. So. So I don't know. And they actually and, did release a shape file that is a little bit more explicit, but it's sort of hard to okay. load in a format that makes sense. So it's functionally like it they did. Of release, course so. it is, right? Yeah. Why would why would you not make why would you make a map easily accessible to the public <laughs> two days before a public hearing when you could make it a little harder? I mean, why, you know, why should we why should we be at all surprised that, that would be the the process here? But but it is. Uh, and it doesn't matter in terms of the math, right? The, the, the big difference for Republican between the Republican map and the Democratic map. And, and when I say a big difference, I really mean a big difference is if Phil Karchman doesn't want to divide Jersey City into three. Yeah. Uh, this could be a pivotal point in his decision making process. Uh, you know, this this may be, you know, Democrats be careful what you wish for, because because it, it could go south. But in terms of the total math, 31, 32, 33, even on the Republican map, it's still Cunningham, it's still Sacco, it's still Sack, Stack, it's, uh, it's, it, Rice is again moving into more of Newark, but that, you know, that, that seat Fine. will, will yeah. never in our lifetimes be competitive in a general election. Uh, mm-hmm. 34, I thought it was sort of interesting. Uh, they did East Orange to Fairfield. Uh, which, which, you know, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to call this the Sam Wang district because it is uh, uh, communities of interest that are not communities of interest, right. uh, but they did it. And, and, you know, it's fair to point out the chairman of the Republican redistricting commission that did this map, Al Barless is the Essex County Republican chairman. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know if this, you know, I don't, I don't think, I don't believe in coincidences. I think what he's doing here is he's showing you know, I'm I'm putting the state first in terms of of, of where the uh, uh, where the Republican opportunities are, even if it even if it, it means that uh, uh, we're not going to get a legislator out of the only Republican part of his county. Uh, and, and stop me if you want to. I'm, I'm just I'm trying to move a little quickly with this, but 36. So you no s- problem. You think if we're going to, if we're going to strategy here, you think Barless is 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 going for a straight take my map. You think there's there's that 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 kind of uh, 
and not that he, not that we don't expect changes. We know we expect changes, yeah. but with that kind of calculation, you think he's saying, "Look, I've got the superior uh, map. I have, um, I have uh, uh, kept to more of your um, uh, criteria. Uh, this is the map for you to take." Rather than force compromise, this is this is yeah. buy into this scheme. Buy into this. Well, scheme. you know, it it depends which Republican in New Jersey you speak to. Uh, you're looking at 20 years of a Democratic majority. Yep. And and there are Republicans who say, let's just let's just go for it. And yeah. and if if the bottom line is is, you know, you know, instead of there being 10 more of us, there'll be 10 less of us. Yeah. They're just they're just Roll they the are dust. tired. Yep. They're just yep. tired of being yep. in the minority yep. every year, every week going down to Trenton. You know, yep. you know, you have you know, you 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 have uh, and, and I don't want to I don't want to name her, but the 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 Republican is legislator who uh, who didn't want her colleagues to to uh, uh, to protest something with the speaker because she had a bill up and and she she stood on the floor and said, Mr. Speaker, thank you for moving my bill. Like like we'll do anything you need us to do. Just let us let us have a couple of your crumbs. So there are Republicans out there that are happy to be there willing yeah. to take their crumbs. And there are some that are saying, you know what, let's just let's just go for it. And if we blow the whole place up, at least we're going to blow it up trying to win. And and there's something I, I, to that. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think you see that in this map. There's a little bit of everything. And, you know, do 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 can they get Karchman to buy into all of that or does he buy into pieces of that is the question, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and by the way, I mean, I, you know, we, we say this all the time, but but here's the problem with, you know, when you start to nibble around the edges of a couple of districts and this is not congressional where you can move a street in Mendham no. into a right. different district and everything will be all right. You know, I've I've been on all sides of this and I've you know, I've been in the room drawing the maps and, you know, you change one town and yeah. the entire map falls. Well, we and, haven't talked and, about that tonight. And it's it's worth noting that, um, you know, there the rule. Uh, for this map, unlike the congressional map, is only Jersey City and Newark get split on the state legislative side. Not, you know, they're the only two right. towns that get split. Yeah. And I don't know if I don't know if Judge Karchman is going to give an opinion. You know, it would be, you know, you you could say that he doesn't want to put his thumb on the scale. On the other hand, he might save people a lot of trouble if he said, I will not vote for a map that splits Jersey City into three. Right. Uh, and if he doesn't say that, then he's he's leading uh Democrats to believe that it's okay. That could cause Republicans to change their submission. Uh, but it, let, let's say hypothetically they don't. Let's say that that Judge Karchman says nothing mm -hmm. uh, about the splitting of Jersey City and right. then goes out there on vote day and says, you know, this I like both of reason. the maps, but yeah. the, the split of Jersey City from two to three is what turned it over. Yeah. And suddenly you're looking at, and I know a lot of things have to happen, but suddenly yeah. you're looking at, at the potential of a Republican legislature because, right. because people because he, didn't read the room. Uh, yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. I think Karchman is going to do, I think Karchman is, and I say this respectfully, uh, oh. uh, he is the he is the George Costanza of redistricting right now. He is going to look at what, what John Wallace did, and he's going to say, I'm going to do the opposite. If yeah, what John yeah. Wallace did was right, yeah. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to do yeah. everything differently than what he said. Well, then then to that point, though, uh, Wallace did spend time with each side telling them what he liked and what he didn't like the map, right? Isn't that, didn't that happen? With, he didn't, I don't know. You know, they say he did, but then they say that he forgot, and, you know, and or, or, you know, it, yeah. it was for naught, but I don't know, you know, yeah. you know, yeah. you, you guys, you guys thank, and, and thank you for this. You listen to the radio show every Saturday. So, so you've heard my, you've heard what I think about, about that process, but this is different. And Philip yep. Parchman is his own man. And, and, yep. and I think, uh, I think this might be different, but anyway, let's, let I want to, yeah. I want to go through, yeah. through what the Republicans have done here too. Can I add one more subtle point to the, yes, to the thing please. about the dirty city split. So, so one of like the non-negotiable requirements of the, the commission is that they can't split municipalities other than Jersey City and Newark. Another is that the districts have to be approximately the same population size. Mm -hmm. And Democrats actually do a fair bit better than Republicans. Um, Democrats have an average deviation of about 1.4%, whereas Republicans, it's like 1.6 or 1.7%. 
and Republicans have the only district of any of the 80 that have been proposed that are actually outside of Karchman's window of acceptable deviation. The 35th district on this map is a little bit too small. I have no idea if that's the kind of thing that Karchman will care about. But when you're looking at these non-negotiable requirements like municipality splits and equal population, um, Democrats have the problem with Jersey City potentially. Republicans potentially have a slightly different problem with it's their districts being more variable. Right. It's a very good point. It is a good uh, point. 37 safe Democrat. Look, look at 30, look at look at 38, which is uh, interesting. Uh, Republicans think that 38 could be in play. I, you know, you know, I've been hearing about 38 being in play for a long time. It was it was inadvertently in play in the last election, which right. was just just sort of a fluke. And, you know, we all know this, right? If you if, if you don't think you're being seriously challenged, you know, you know, that becomes the perfect storm. You're not, it's, you know, had, had, had more money been spent on those right. elections, it wouldn't have been, and it wasn't close, by the way, at the end of the day, it wasn't close. It was close on election night, but it, but that's just because the votes had not, you know, yet been counted because people have decided that it was they were okay there, at, yeah. 10, at 10 o'clock on an election night, but that is a different conversation. Uh, so you start looking at 38 Washington township, Oradell, Oradell is is you know on a good day a swing town. It, it sort of sort of leans Democratic, but yeah. in in thirty eight, I mean, you want to talk about the the swingiest of districts. Uh, uh, Phil Jack Chitterelli beat Phil Murphy in this district by one percent, one wow. point. So so in a in a gubernatorial election year, not a federal election year, in a gubernatorial election year, this district, you know, with adding Washington Township, uh, losing, you know, a little bit around the edge, uh, you know, this is, you know, if, you know, perfect storm, all your dreams come true, mm -hmm. this is the district that, that puts you to, to 21 seats. Uh, but, but that means that everything has to work everywhere, you know, including holding District 12. So, And then the gamble with is, that is that right now the 38th is fairly Democratic. The 39th right. is like less Democratic than that. And yeah. then the 40th is less Democratic than that. Mm -hmm. This map right. makes all three of them really similar partisanship wise. They does, all voted for Joe Biden by about 10 points. I don't have the gubernatorial numbers. Maybe you well, do, I, David. And I did because I, you know, I spent some time on some of these districts. It was... Uh, uh, so 38, 50, 49, 39, 51, 49, and 40, 52, 47. Wow. So, so in a so bad year what, for Republicans, suddenly all three of those are in danger. Yeah. So it's yeah, a gamble. Bad, yeah. And that's that's the that's the crazy thing with the, you know, and 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 I'm not, I'm not, you know, I I, I sort of admire the boldness of it, but this is these are risks here because because one one bad year. And, you know, one epically bad year and and Republicans are now down around their Watergate level. Well, and, and can we say can we say not even just one epically bad year, but let's say last year had been as expected for Democrats. Let's say they had performed as expected. And, and, and you know, that would have been the kind of year we're talking about. That would have been the kind of result we're talking about with this map. And 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 it was only because of the. Um, uh, out the, uh, the the better performance that those three or four hundred thousand extra votes on Cittarelli's part um, that they wound up doing better than expected. But if that hadn't happened, we would be looking at that scenario, that exact scenario you're talking about statewide under this map. Right. It it would have been, and you'd have Steve Sweeney as the Senate president. Right. And 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 we'd be living. And Steve Sweeney, you know, we didn't talk about that at all, and, and we don't have to because it's yeah. it's settled law. But yep. but if Steve Sweeney were on this commission. I have a feeling that districts one, two, three, and eight, you know, one, two, and three on the Democratic map would look a little bit different. And yep. Republicans wouldn't be, you know, as feel as necessary to have shored those up. Uh, but yeah, these these could be, and you know, again, these these might be late in the decade maps. I mean, you know, I look at, right. you know, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll tell you one thing, one observation I have about, about 40 is, is, and I think Republicans would, would be favored to win this in 23, all things being equal, not drastically altering the landscape. But but you've got you've got uh, uh, Assemblyman De Phillips and Assemblyman Rooney in Wyckoff, and 
Bergen is not a big part of this new 40th district. And, and you know, if you know, if you know Peter Murphy, the Passaic County Republican chairman, he's going to look in this, this district and he's going to say, why the hell am I giving Bergen County two assembly seats? Uh, you know, you know I, I think they'll walk away with one, not necessarily, but but Peter Murphy is is going to uh, Peter Murphy is going to look at this and and there's you know he just won a freeholder he's playing a win yeah. this year and yeah. and and he's gonna he's gonna pick uh, he's gonna pick a new assemblyman there and I'll you know I mean I you know I I, I heard one name this afternoon a guy named Ralph Sinke uh, who who is is the head football coach in Clifton and lives in Wayne wow. and. You know, you start doing those. If you start setting That's, it up for for Peter Murphy, where yeah. where he's building himself by having a Clifton, you know, a, a, you know, for That's all the kind of magic. Purposes. Yeah, That's, the and, parties love that kind of a play in these exactly districts, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, now, I heard of Ralph Sinke today. I don't know that Peter Murphy has heard of Ralph Sinke yet, but but uh, <laughs> but we'll see. But so you're looking. At, that's it, right? Thirty eight, thirty nine. 40. I mean, these are, you know, these are, uh, these are some, 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 some potentially tough districts and some risks. And then just, just go over to close this up, which is Morris County. You know, again, you know, Democrats have, have apparently bailed on trying to flip Morris legislative seats in this, this decade and Republicans have it shored up. Chris Barranco, Jay Weber are in the 26 where, where they always have been, uh, you know, not, I mean, the, 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 the change here is, is, uh, uh, is really that, uh, I can't, can't really tell. I mean, it's, again, please, map makers, don't use one shade of yellow and another shade of yellow oh in adjoining districts. It would be really easy for you to hit on that little, you know, that, that, that little figure and just, just color it in differently. But, you know, if, I guess if that's the worst they can do, then that's, that's not so terrible, but, but, but they're in no danger of losing 25. Uh, Buco or Panaccio, those districts, you know, Steve Oroho, you know, Michael Doherty. I mean, this is one of the changes. Doherty comes into Morris County and he takes Mount Olive. It, it, no sweat off Steve Oroho's back. Uh, uh, you know, Mike Doherty will just continue to win. And, and that's what we've got right now. We've got, we've got two maps, you know, one, a conservative Democratic map that, yep. that, you know, looks at maybe picking up a seat in Burlington County. Yep. And, uh, and we've got a, uh, you know, we've got a bold, bold Republican map that is, is, is saying, you know, we're, we're just, we're going to do everything. We, we're going to, we're going to try and win and, and we'll, uh, you know, we'll take our chances. So, so I guess, cause this is, we're, we're now at, at two hours, uh, you know, which is welcome. Welcome to a conversation between Mike and I. Uh, but, but you know, two hours. We've gone through these two maps. Uh, do either of you think there's any chance that Phil Karchman will review these maps, listen to the public testimony on Wednesday, and call them into the room and say, "Hey guys, this isn't even close. I love one of your maps. I'm ready to vote for it right now." No, but okay. I think that if he were to do that, if he were forced to do that, he would, my guess is that he would lean towards the Democratic map. Yeah. yeah. Because it's less of a disruptive map. I also, mm -hmm. um, one thing we haven't, we, we've talked about, you know, individual districts and where they lean. I calculated uh, the, the median district in the mm -hmm. state for each map, meaning that the district, so in New Jersey, since there's an even number of districts, it's the district that would be between the 20th and the 21st most Republican or most Democratic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and the democratic map, um, has like favors Democrats. Um, where is my calculation by 3.3 points. So the median district is 3.3 points more democratic than the state as a whole. Okay. Um, and on the Republican map, the median district is 4.1 points more wow. Republican than the state as a whole. So, a um, so in terms of two of the most important considerations, which are, um, continuity of representation and partisan fairness, the Democratic map edges out the Republican map. Um, in terms of compactness, Republicans might do a little better because there's some really weird shapes in the Democratic map that aren't necessarily replicated on the Republican map. Um, 
it really, the, the most important thing in terms of these maps, in terms of the eventual map that Cartman will help to redraw, who knows, in terms of these two maps, the most important thing for what Cartman would choose would be which criteria of his he leans on more. And we just don't really know which are actually most important to him. Right. Because Republicans are Republicans are coming to play with uh, five. Is it five? Four, uh, 11, yeah, five. Yeah. 12, 14, 16, more than five, uh, 30, you know, 38, 39, 40. They're mm -hmm. they're putting eight seats up on the table yeah. that that in a certain environment or with a certain candidate would be would be competitive. Uh, the Democrats have is it three, right? I mean, two is always gonna well, it's yeah. it's actually nine because I didn't include two, you know. You can actually take the Republican map ten if you add three, right? I mean, you yeah. add you add district and, and go to eleven, district one, district two, district three, four. Then you start going up. The Democrats are not; they're not playing in as many competitive areas. So, so this is this is going to be a you know this is this is what Judge Karchman's call is going to be is is what's more important: lots of competitive districts or or, you know, or, or other parts of the criteria that he's talked about. Well, you raise uh, really, you both raise really good, um, important questions. And I think for the Democrats, they seem to have pulled their punches a little bit. And I don't know if that's a function of just not playing as much in South Jersey as they would have in previous years, or if it's because they are trying to be conservative and not ask for the star on the moons with Karchman, or is it because they are not as much on the ascendancy as they were, as they as they once were, right? So they're trying to sort of, um, you know, come up with a very um, uh, tight, less uh, fluctuating map because that's really what they're down to at this point in their majority, right? So they're not looking for uh, fifty-five or sixty seats the way that they or sixty seats the way that they once would have. Um, they're looking to defend what they've got. Okay. Uh Guys, thank you so much. This is, I know it's a big time commitment and, you know, today was a, today was a long day, but uh, uh, let's, let's do this again soon. I think this was uh, interesting and hopefully somebody watched us, right? <laughs> let's tomorrow, let's turn the maps literally upside down yeah. and then, and then analyze them that way. Um, I we think that'd that would be really helpful. You think, you think we Judge Carson's watching? Hello, Judge Carson. You are? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, I'll close it with this because it's appropriate. Uh, Justice Wallace is not watching. It's after, <laughs> five, it's after 5 p.m. And, and he's done and he's checked out. So thank you both of you for doing for, for doing this. And let's let's keep watching where this is going. It's going to get really interesting. Thanks, David. Thanks, Joey. OK, thank you. Good night, good night everybody. You. Bye. All right, I'm dropping out. Thanks, David. That was hey, great. Thanks, everybody. Bye.